So here's the deal. If you're new to our channel, for the past several years we've been on a journey to become more self-sufficient. And we've been on a quest to create more of our food from scratch. And what we can't grow or harvest ourselves, we're trying to at least buy the highest quality local products that we can. We don't have a milk cow, but we do have access to raw milk in our community, which we take full advantage of. Today, we're talking about learning the ability to make your own dairy products from milk. I've mentioned this before, but this is hands down my favorite cookbook and just my favorite reading material. It talks a lot about foods we used to eat as a society or foods they eat in other parts of the world or at an earlier point in time and some of the things that maybe were really good for us that are just lacking in what we call the standard American diet and one of those are cultured dairy products. To be honest, until I read this book, I didn't know how to make a lot of these dairy products like yogurt, butter, cream cheese, whey, cr cheese, buttermilk. I didn't really know the difference between all of these things. And what really intrigues me about this book is it talks a lot about how to get probiotics back in our diet that are severely lacking. And one of the ways to do that is through cultured dairy products such as kefir and yogurt. We've been making our own kefir for well over a year now. It's similar to yogurt. It's sold in some grocery stores. It's normally flavored. It's kind of like a drinkable yogurt. It's made with kefir grains that can be cultured at room temperature. And I don't want any more doodads and gadgets in my kitchen that only have one purpose, so that was attractive to me. The downside is that kefir does best when you're changing the milk out or you're making a new batch every 24 hours. There are ways to slow it down by putting it in the refrigerator, but we're just not consuming our milk kefir right now. The first year I was consuming this in the form of smoothies. You can use it to make sourdough bread, which is pretty cool. And some people even make salad dressings out of it. I do believe there's ways to thicken it so that it's, it's not like a runny, milky consistency, just a little bit thicker than normal milk. And the taste of it, it's just, it's okay. It's not something I would consume by itself. So, because I'm looking for a more spoonable yogurt, I did some research and I found something that can actually be cultured without a yogurt maker. What? I'm warning you now, if you don't want to nerd out about yogurt, probably should find a different video to watch. Apparently, there's two types of yogurt, mesophilic and thermophilic. Most yogurt culture is thermophilic, which means it likes heat. It likes to be cultured at at least 100 degrees, if not a little bit warmer, for eight plus hours. And that's challenging to achieve with just normal stuff in your kitchen. A crock pot on warm is too hot, I've tried it. An oven on the lowest setting is too warm. People are able to make yogurt without a yogurt maker through different ways of playing with their crock pot, their oven. Some people take boiling water and put it in a cooler with their yogurt. So I thought there has to be a better way. Mesophilic yogurt cultures can be cultured right on your countertop. They like a temperature of about 70 to 77 degrees, which is doable. Autopilot yogurt, guys, that's what I'm talking about. And then, but I'm not done there. I learned there's not just one type of yogurt culture, but there's a lot of types of yogurt cultures and they all have different flavors. So I thought, we gotta experiment. So I found a culture variety pack. Here are the four types of yogurt we're gonna try today. We have Vili, a Finnish yogurt variety. 
Feely is very mild and creamy with a fairly thick consistency. Versatile, perfect on its own or in any yogurt recipe. We have, I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation, Phil Muck. It's Finnish, has a tangy flavor reminiscent of cheese and a custard-like texture. Kids love it. Matsuni, a thin custard-like texture with notes of honey. Its flavor is the most yogurty and is a popular choice for frozen yogurt. And last but not least, we have Pima, a Scandinavian variety. It's very thin and drinkable with a mild flavor. The Nourishing Traditions cookbook talks a lot about Pima culture and Pima milk. So I'm really excited to try that one out, although I suspect it's gonna be oddly similar to milk kefir. And I don't know if it's what we're looking for, but hey, what have we got to lose? that for the purpose of starting your culture, it's important to use a pasteurized milk and that's so that the culture isn't competing with the naturally present bacteria in raw milk. It's possible to begin making raw milk yogurt later, which we're going to experiment with, but for this batch, we're using pasteurized milk. So I did that last night. So that's pretty much it for starting these guys. It's extremely straightforward. All you need is one to two cups of cold pasteurized milk. Per starter, dump the culture in, give it a good mix, cover it with something breathable like cheesecloth and stick it in a warm area of your home for at least 12 hours or until the yogurt has set but no longer than 48 hours. What we're gonna do, because we keep our garage around 68 degrees, it's probably a little cooler because we don't have our heater on right now. I'm gonna go ahead and boot these cucumber seedlings off their seed heating mat. You can pick these up at most garden supply stores or Amazon. I'll go ahead and link to them, but this can raise the temperature of whatever's on it by 10 to 20 degrees. They certainly don't feel that warm to me. I've put my fermented drinks on here and they don't go bonkers surprisingly, so I'm gonna guess that it's only raising at about 10 degrees. I guess I could check it with a thermometer. That's not a bad idea now that I think about it, but I think this is the perfect place to let our yogurt sit. were set at about 12 hours and then the other two were set after 24 hours. We didn't have to go to 48 hours for any of them. Are you ready? I don't know if you can tell but there's a thin layer on top and it was deceptive because when I went like that with the jar it appeared to be set but then if I poked a small hole the two that weren't set after 12 hours there was pretty much milk underneath. It wasn't set at all. So that first layer is it's kind of hard to tell on camera. Um, let's check on this guy here. There you go. It's like, it's a little bit of a crust. So I'm not sure if that's the fat or what. And I don't know if I'm supposed to stir that back in with the yogurt. I think for the taste testing, uh, I want to taste that good stuff underneath. Wow, that one's a good layer. Um, so I think I'm going to put this all in 
like a bowl or something. So I don't know about you, but that looks like yogurt to me. I was really worried the consistency was gonna be on the thinner side, the runnier side. I was gonna be shocked if we got anything that actually resembled yogurt, um, but I'm pretty happy with that. Even the Pima milk is supposed to be more of a drinkable texture, and I would say, I mean, it's just as yogurty as anything else, so really excited to see uh, how differently these all taste from each other. Let's start with the Pima milk first, and I think what might work well is let's look to see what it's supposed to taste like, and then I'll tell you if I think it tastes like that or not. Very thin and drinkable with a mild flavor. Yeah, I would say I'm really, really happy with this texture. This is like store-bought thick yogurt to me. That's a big complaint and a challenge when it comes to making your own yogurt. So I've read as a lot of people have a hard time getting that spoonable, thick consistency we all like. There are ways to thicken your yogurt. This video is not the place to talk about that. If you wanna nerd out, there's tons of information on it. So if we didn't have the texture that we wanted right off the bat, I wouldn't be worried about it at all. Hmm, that's very interesting. I wouldn't call that flavor mild, and it also does not taste like the yogurt I'm used to at the grocery store, like Greek yogurt. To me, I would say this isn't very palatable on its own. Maybe if we sweeten it or something. I'm not even sure if I would love that for like something more savory, like a ranch dressing. Next up, fill muck, fill muck. Tangy, a thin custard like texture, and supposedly it's really good with fruit. I guess, unless I say otherwise, the texture of all these is the same. Good texture. Hmm, not loving it. I would almost say that's a little bit bitter. I don't know if I'd use the word tangy. I would say the Pima is more tangy, uh, the Filmuk is a little more mild to me. Aside from that, I, I really can't even tell them apart. And Vili. Supposedly there's a couple different strains of Vili culture. One of them I believe is like super stringy. This is not that culture, or so I don't believe. Mild and creamy, versatile, and supposedly a favorite among kids. Oh, wow. That's very different. I would say so far, I like this one more than these two. It has left less of like a kind of bitter, not so pleasant aftertaste, although it's still not something I would enjoy on its own. I'm curious how this one would sweeten up with maybe some honey, maple syrup, or even jam. And last but not least, we have Matsuni. Thin, custard-like texture with notes of honey. Its flavor is the most yogurty and is a popular choice for frozen yogurt. Okay, so based on the description, this one should be the best. Hmm, that's very different. I wish I had more to say about all of these. I think Jesse and I are very much in this transition on figuring out what real food tastes like. In America, at least, our first experience with yogurt is like, I remember eating Trix yogurt when I was a kid. You know, it tasted like Trix cereal and it was dyed full of sugar, probably totally unhealthy for you. So that's kind of what I'm in my head comparing this to. Of course, I've matured since then. Now I eat maybe a healthier Greek yogurt with no artificial flavoring in it that is sweetened. But this here is real yogurt. A lot of people do buy yogurt from the store and you are able to save a little bit of that and put it in new milk and culture it. Again, a lot of that stuff isn't stuff you're gonna do on your counter countertop, but does require heat. We have some Greek yogurt in our refrigerator. I'd be curious to culture that and then see how that compares to these. Yeah, I would say none of these would I enjoy on their own, but Let's kick it up a notch. Let's see what happens when we add some blueberry jam. Wow. Oh. 
Oh, well, well, how about that? Dun 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 Hmm, that does help. This one's much more mild tasting than the Matsuni. Here's the film, film muck. I'm actually liking that one now with the sweetener. And last but not least, the Pima. Hmm, I would say the sugar really helps. I wish that wasn't the case because we aren't all of us trying to reduce the amount of sugar in our diets. I can't strongly recommend one over the other. So I think if you're interested in making your own yogurt, the reason I bought this variety pack was because I think it was roughly the same cost of getting an individual culture, except there's four different ones that I could try out. And if you're serious about learning to make your own yogurt, I think it is worth trying different cultures because you can't try one of them and say, I don't like homemade yogurt, it's yucky. There's a lot of things you could do to change that flavor. And to us, this is an investment in making our yogurt for the long haul. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sleep on this. I'm gonna keep all of this in the refrigerator. I'm pretty sure it'll last a while. And I'm not sure, actually I could tell you, I have no interest in maintaining four different yogurt cultures. One's probably enough. So I need to think about which one I wanna continue. And until I make up my mind, I might keep all four going. I also might bring some samples to friends and see if any friends have interest in making their own yogurt once they see how easy it is and that it could be done on their countertop. I think the nice thing about these heirloom cultures is that they can, you can make yogurt indefinitely. So all of my friends make their own sourdough bread, but not everyone's making sourdough all of the time. But between everybody, there's always someone that's willing to give some away as a starter. So I kind of, in my perfect world, see that happening with yogurt. I think like what is important is that Someone somewhere keeps these cultures alive. I know there's a lot of companies that sell cultures online. I think that's really great. And the way I justify it is you can save so much money, not to mention there's so many health benefits to making your own fermented products that if you end up letting your culture go, as I've done with my sourdough, I personally have no problem buying the culture again because I stand behind the companies that provide these things. And this whole set here was $12 and I'm confident I'm gonna get more than $12 out of yogurt from them. This was a really fun experiment for me. I don't know if I published this video before or after this one, but I also taste tested two different types of vanilla beans in six, in three different types of alcohol for a total of six combinations of vanilla. You don't know what you're missing out on until you try. Sometimes you're not missing out on anything, but other times you really are. And again, if you're gonna go through the effort of making your own product and keeping something alive, it could be worth it to taste test. Hmm. It's thick. Wow! Zing! Wow! We exciting, really exciting. Yowie! Wow! That is good. Definitely, definitely good. Delightful. Hmm. Also delightful. Hmm. I see what Alyssa means that like straight from the container. Mm. This with the jam, not half bad.